All right, folks, I want to take a quick look at uh, feeding devices. I'll, I'll kind of leave it at that. Um, the, really, the primary focus is to discuss the difference between a clip and a magazine. But I think that this uh, questions uh, that are, are kind of left unanswered uh, when I look around online, um, at least I'm not finding the answers I'm looking for all in one place. Now, ultimately, um, if you're in a gun shop or you're talking to somebody that, that knows uh, guns and you use the term clip, um, you say, hey, I'm looking for a clip for my pistol, uh, they, they know what you're talking about. What you're really talking about is a magazine. Um, most people in uh, everyday life that own guns don't own guns that use clips. Um, but there are such a thing as a clip, and then, of course, there is also uh, magazines. Typically, when we refer to magazines on a, a rifle or a pistol or any type of uh, firearm, we're referencing removable magazines. Uh, a lot of guns have magazines that are not removable. So the, the real question becomes, so what's the difference between a clip and a magazine if, in fact, uh, we're... We're going to say that, you know, when the media says, hey, we need to ban high capacity clips, um, I, I kind of laugh because I know that they obviously don't know what the heck they're talking about. And they're displaying their own ignorance in a way that they just, quite frankly, don't really understand. Um, so let's take a peek at that. Um, basically, first of all, let's look at what everyone refers to as a clip, and, which is actually a magazine. Um, a magazine essentially is a feeding device for your rifle, for your pistol, okay, for whatever your firearm is. Uh, on the table here are detachable magazines. Uh, the magazines here are, are of the box type, okay, they, they are a box of some form. What they all have in common is a spring. So on this particular magazine here, this is a 22 rimfire magazine. Uh, this fires the tiny little 22 rimfire uh, case, 22 long rifle, and this fits an AR-15 looking uh, gun, although it, it, again, it just fires the little tiny 22 shell. Um, the spring can be seen uh, through the cutout, and uh, again, the purpose of the spring is to push this part, in this case, this, this uh, what we call a follower, is, is red, so it's easy to see, this is almost a cutaway. Um, so the purpose of the spring is to push the follower up, and of course the purpose of the follower is to push the cartridges or the shells up, not bullets, but that's another video. Um, so basically, the magazine is the complete unit. It, it houses the shells, and it has a spring and a follower for the purpose of feeding the, the cartridges. Um, if we take a look at some different examples, um, I have here, uh, kind of on coming into camera view, uh, an M1 uh, Garand, or an M1 Garand, I guess is the correct way to pronounce it, although I usually don't, for whatever reason. Uh, on the M1, the magazine is a part of the rifle, okay? So the magazine itself um, is this open area in the rifle, and if I carefully hold the uh, op rod back, I can see that the follower in the spring is right here. It's actually uh, built into the weapon. It's a permanent part of it. These are dummy rounds. This is not live ammo, but I'm not going to insert it in here uh, all the way. But essentially, this is a clip. Okay, A clip is simply a device to hold cartridges together. Okay, The clip allows me to take eight rounds, insert it into this rifle. If I push this all the way down, it would lock. And then, of course, as the rifle cycles, it will eject one shell at a time, one empty, uh, empty cartridge case. And then in the end, the clip, just the metal part, the brass is flying out, the bullet is exiting the barrel. The metal uh, stamp sheet metal clip gets ejected from the top of the rifle. So again, the magazine is a part of this rifle, and this rifle uses an auxiliary, what we call a clip. On other guns, a uh, pump-action shotgun would be a typical example, or a lever-action uh, rifle. Um, the magazine is, is a tube that's under the barrel. 
So here we have a tube. Shells would be loaded in through the bottom. Again, there's a spring-loaded plunger. So the tube itself is the magazine. Uh, the spring and the uh, follower are a part of it, and they stay with the gun all the time. So you load the shells directly into the gun, and then as the action is cycled and the shells eject, the next one comes in, and eventually, when this is empty, uh, you can see on the follower right here that there's no shells present. Uh, some followers are painted you know, bright colors so that they're high visibility, but again, the, the brass end of a shotgun shell is a lot different looking than this, and you can visually inspect this by looking into the chamber, and you can tell that she's empty. Uh, but suffice it to say, the magazine is a permanent part of this weapon. <clears throat> If we take a look at one more example, we have an Enfield uh, rifle here. This is a Lee Enfield uh, 303 British. This has a magazine. Again, I can press the spring down from the top. This magazine is actually detachable. It removes. So it is a box magazine. Okay. I could load this magazine here and then insert it in. and. Uh, uh, run this rifle or and this is the third example I could load this with a clip this particular clip is what's called a stripper clip so with the M1 the clip again it's just a sheet metal part no spring stayed in the gun and was ejected when the gun was empty a stripper clip is a little bit different the stripper clip actually goes uh, into a guide. In this case, this rifle has a guide machined into the top of the receiver. So instead of removing the magazine, I could simply put the clip in and with a good hard push on the top, it would shove the rounds into the magazine. It would take two of these clips to load this, uh, this, uh, this particular rifle. Again, I've got dummy cartridges here. I don't have live ammunition uh, with the firearms for safety's sake. But essentially, we would use a clip to load uh, a magazine. So the clip may load a magazine that is a permanent part of the rifle, and the clip may be used to load a magazine that is detachable. So there's, again, variation uh, even there. I have one more clip, uh, just as an example. I don't have shells for it. This is for the 6.5. Carcano. So if you picture the rifle that Lee Oswald, uh, Lee Harvey Oswald used when he shot President Kennedy, um, this clip holds six cartridges and is inserted into the top. It's again a bolt action rifle. Much like the M1 uh, Garand, it does not have um, a uh, box magazine, but it has a spring that actually pushes through the middle of these tabs. My finger won't fit and it shoves the cartridges up and this clip is dropped out the bottom via gravity uh, when the gun is empty. So again, it is effectively ejected. This is a stripper clip guide. This could be placed on the back of a box magazine. So an M14 or an M1A, uh, similar to the, uh, the uh, Lee Enfield, uh, can be loaded with stripper clips through the top of the gun. There's a stripper clip guide machined into the receiver or the magazine, as in this case, can be removed from the gun and a, a, a sheet metal guide can be attached to the back side of it. And again, I don't have the correct uh, clip for this, but again, it would slide into this guide and then it would, the shells would be pushed into the magazine. Uh, this is a 10 round magazine, but they make these up to 25 rounds. So again, it's a lot easier to load uh, those magazines using the clip. Okay. So basically, if you are using the word clip, you are talking about a device that is usually a stamped piece of sheet metal, like this, that simply holds cartridges. Okay, The clip may be uh, with the gun while the cartridges are fed, or in the case of the stripper clip, the cartridges are pushed through into a magazine and then the clip is immediately discarded, okay? So that is a clip. The magazine itself is a, uh, you know, in this case, it's a box with a spring. 
Um, in some cases, as I showed, the magazine is a part of the gun, but again, the trick is there is a spring in the magazine doing the pushing and feeding the cartridges. Now, with that having been said, there are still different types of magazines. Um, the one I don't have really here is a drum magazine. Um, they're not that common on guns that the average uh, civilian would own for hunting purposes, but uh, if you're into military type guns, uh, you know, the old Thompson machine gun, the Tommy gun had the big magazine. You could pick, kind of picture that drum mag. Um, they're a little unique and I won't cover them in this video, but again, the, I guess the purpose of this is to show that there's a lot of variety. Um, this magazine here in particular is a, from a Colt 45, a 1911 uh, pistol. Um, this is what we call a single stack magazine. The magazine is narrow, the cartridges go in uh, from the front, and again, they, they, they stack in a single column, uh, which is why the magazine is, again, so skinny. Here, I have a magazine from a Smith & Wesson m and uh, 40 caliber pistol. Um, this magazine, as the shells go in, they, they stagger in a little column left and right. So this is what we call a double stack magazine. Both of these magazines feed the cartridges from a central narrow point. So if I had uh, ammunition in these, uh, you would see that the cartridges are, are fed straight out the middle. Um, so feeding these uh, requires the cartridge to be pushed down uh, and then fed into the back. And perhaps we'll talk about that in another video. But again, we have single stack, single feed, sing, uh, double stack, single feed. The remaining magazines that are here are what we call double stack, double feed. So this magazine holds 9mm ammunition. Uh, it's a Colt type stick mag for a 9mm submachine gun, or in this case, a, a 9mm AR-15. Uh, this cartridge actually has two rows of shells, so they stack, uh, they stagger left and right as they go in, and it feeds from the left and the right conversely. So I have a 300 blackout mag, same idea, and you can see that clearly. Uh, you can see that the shells are visible on both the left and the right, and because the uh, cartridges kind of push on the opposite cartridge, you know, staggered left and right, they, they shove the cartridge into what's called the feed lips, which is the part that retains them, and uh, they don't just all fly out. But the beauty of a double stack, double feed magazine, and I'll, I'll eject a couple of these with my thumb, you can see out of the right, at least from my point of view, left, you know, right, left, right, is that these cartridges uh, can be fed in by simply pushing straight down from the middle. The opening is wider than the cartridges and they simply feed in and kind of lock into place. So from the back view, uh, maybe you can see that a little more clearly, although they're trying to fall out the front when I do that. Um, they simply feed in straight from the top. Whereas the single stack mags, uh, the cartridges have to literally be pushed down so the cartridge can be slid under the centrally located feed lips, okay? So that's a little bit different. But again, uh, double stack, single stack, and again, single feed and double feed. You can see the width of the cartridges. Uh, the top of the mag is different. My favorite is the uh, quote unquote banana clip. Um, Again, this is an AK-47 magazine. Um, the banana shape is uh, due to the way the cartridges stack. Um, most cartridges for rifles are not straight. They have a slight taper to them. So if you were to stack them up on a table like a row of pencils, they don't stack straight. They stack in a curve. So the magazine is stacked in a, is, is curved because uh, the cartridges for the AK, the 7.62x39 in this case, have a lot of taper and therefore they, they really need to stack in a curve in order to feed effectively. However, so I, I get the banana, I get banana, okay, it's curved like a banana. This is not a clip though, okay, again, this is a clip. This is a stripper clip, but a clip. This is a clip. This is a magazine because it has a spring, okay. So again, that is a look at uh, these types of magazines. Now, with the 22 mags, and, and they're identifiable 
usually because they have some sort of a mechanism to allow you to pull the spring tension down. Um, 22 mags are typically single stack. There are some double stack mags out there. I know Caltech makes, uh, makes one, and I'm sure there's other companies as well. Uh, these are all single stack, and again, they all feature this little tab, so they're easily identifiable. Um, your rim fire cartridges are typically small in diameter. Uh, the brass is really thin, uh, and it dents easily. And, and because these have to, again, be fed under the feed lips, and you can actually see this kind of cutout area where the rim uh, has to fit under here, and then it's captured on the back, if you were to simply push the shells down with the shell above it, you'd risk denting the thin, thin brass on those tiny little cartridges. So again, that's what that's for. All right, the last thing that I have here um, that I want to talk about are belts. Um, belts are uh, basically what we call a, uh, uh, this is, it's a feeding device, okay? It's not a clip. Uh, or it's not a magazine. It's, it's probably closer in function to a clip uh, than a magazine because it is a stamped piece of sheet metal, at least these belts are disintegrating uh, links, what we call. They, they, they physically come apart as the shells are, are pulled out, the links fall apart. Um, it does not include a spring, uh, but of course the weapon that this goes in doesn't really have a spring either. It has a mechanical pawl that pulls the cartridges through. Essentially, uh, the bolt would strip a cartridge out of the back, and then uh, as the action cycles back and forth, the mechanical arm kind of grabs and pulls and grabs and pulls and grabs and pulls and feeds these in. So a belt is a unique uh, thing. Um, again, these particular belts, this particular belt has disintegrating links. So when you're done shooting, you have a, a mess on the ground, okay? And then there are other types of belts, like this old cloth belt for a 1919 uh, A4 uh, machine gun that, uh, you know, are not disintegrating. So I guess the advantage of the cloth belt is that uh, when you're done, you, you still have a belt. You just pick it up off the ground and you put it in your pocket. Um, whereas with the Lynx, they kind of got the cool factor, I suppose. If you're into that sort of thing, but with the links, uh, you have again just a mess to pick up. I'm not sure the military is concerned about that. Uh, but again, these are, are really would be considered generically as a high capacity feeding uh, device. Okay, now, the cloth belt is uh, it is what it is. It's this one holds you know 100 rounds approximately. Um, the links can be just added, linked together endlessly. I suppose you could have a million rounds if you wanted to uh, in, in one continuous link. Um, so basically that, that kind of covers hopefully the difference between uh, a magazine, uh, a little bit on different types of magazines, and again the, the clip. Um, so please don't, please don't go down to uh, your local gun shop uh, and walk in and say, hey, I need a clip for my 45. Um, there is no such thing, okay? You need a magazine for your 45. Um, or you need mags, you know what I mean? Short version. Um, again, clips are pretty rare uh, these days, and they're usually relegated to uh, older military type um, rifles uh, designed really to just uh, ease the loading uh, out into the, into the field. Um, most people aren't going to ever own a belt-fed uh, weapon in their life, and if they do, it's probably a semi-automatic conversion from an actual full automatic uh, rifle because uh, the full autos are really expensive. Although you know people have them, and believe it or not, in spite of what the news media would have you think, they are legal in uh, most states uh, to own uh, after you go through the process and the paperwork. Um, oh, one more thing, I totally forgot. Um, on the table here, these are, are tools to help assist loading uh, magazines. Again, uh, these tools would, would fit on the top of a magazine. They're, they're, they're a specific tool for a specific magazine. Uh, they essentially are, these are Mag Lula's, what they called, um, that are, that's the brand name of these. But essentially there's mag loading tools out there that allow the uh, uh, tool to push down on the top of the shelves and assist in the loading. 
Um, and I can demonstrate unloading uh, with this tool by simply cogging this back and forth. It'll drop the shells out. Uh, essentially what it does is uh, pushing in one direction, it shoves one side down, allows me to just drop a case in. And then when I push it the other direction, again, I can drop a case in on the other side. Um, again, these are magazine loaders, okay? They're not clip loaders. So don't go looking for uh, the uh, Maglula clip loader at your local gun shop. Uh, again, you're, you're probably not going to find it. And that's it. Bye-bye.